driving room for such an awesome lane so far. I mean, it's really been a beautiful day. So if we can start off with maybe a round of applause. Yeah. Now, for any of you out there that may get nervous about giving speeches, I highly recommend tricking the audience into applauding at the beginning like I just did to you. <laughs> that, that felt great. <laughs> Alright, so about a year ago at the engagement party when Jamie over here slipped up and told me that I was going to be best man before Eric had the chance to ask me. Um, <laughs> my first reaction was, wow, this is awesome. You know, it was like winning a popularity contest. I was like, definitive proof that Eric likes me better than all of his other friends. <laughs> uh, doesn't get more concrete than that. Um, I'm actually kidding. Seriously. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but I was really excited at first, and um, then I found out that there were responsibilities associated with being this way. <laughs> the excitement faded. <laughs> Just kidding. The first thing is you got to play the bachelor party. So I remember thinking to myself, all right, that sounds like an awesome job. That's, you know, it's like asking Tyler Perry to make a bad movie. It's just going to happen. <laughs> Um, then I found out that I had to make a beautiful, memorable, and nostalgic wedding speech in front of this massive amount of people. I got a little intimidated, I'm not going to lie, you know, a little nervous about it, started thinking to myself, it's been since, like, public speaking in college six years ago since I even made a speech, I don't know how to do this, it's going to be horrible. Then I remember that I aced my public speaking class in college. <laughs> So without further ado, prepare yourselves for the most beautiful, awe-inspiring, laughter-inducing, while at the same time tear-inducing story that you're ever going to hear, and most likely your whole lives. <laughs> Starts off 2004, freshman year of college, University of Delaware. I had just met Eric, it was like maybe a month or two in. Oh, by the way, this is a real story, like Real Housewives in New Jersey real. Um, so I just met Eric, we're hanging out in the dorms together, it's like a Tuesday night or something, so we're not out drinking or anything, we're drinking inside. <laughs> and uh, I was hanging out with Eric, a guy named Steve Newth, and another guy named Tommy Glavick. And, you know, we're just hanging out, talking about guy stuff, and getting to know each other. They all happen to go to the same high school, so they already knew each other. I'm the outsider, I'm from Annapolis, I didn't know any of them. So, talking about guy stuff quickly turns into talking about girls, which quickly turns into a debate about whose high school, or whose high school had hotter girls, St. Mark's or where I was from in Annapolis. And uh, I thought I had it beaten. I mean, Annapolis has some pretty cute girls, but I saw the yearbook from St. Mark's that Steve pulled out, and I have to admit, St. Mark's has some cute girls. <laughs> Why are you laughing? I just sounded like a pedophile. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> I thought that the other 18-year-old girls were saying this. Anyway, so at this point after proving me wrong, they're all going around and showing me like the cutest girl at their school, and Steve takes the yearbook and he flips the page and he points down and he's like, Ashley and Ford. She is so beautiful. Her hair smells like flowers. <laughs> she loves kids. <laughs> then Tommy took it. And he was like, oh my god, Alicia Barrett. It doesn't get any better than this. This girl like gets to the homeless and looks <laughs> like sunshine dust. <laughs> this is actually how 18-year-old guys talk about girls, if you guys didn't know. I'm not watering this down for any of you. This is raw. Um, so then, if any of you know Eric, you know, he's really opinionated and can sometimes even be very rude about how opinionated he is. So, in typical Eric fashion, he grabs the book away from both of them. He's like, both of you are completely wrong. Flips to Lauren's picture, points down at him and says, Lauren David Luizzi, that's the prettiest girl I've ever seen. Really <laughs> like, I have to admit, when I first saw Lauren's picture, I was like, wow. I wonder if she has maybe a younger sister. I didn't think <laughs> <laughs> now, 
I'm serious. The point I'm trying to make here is when I first met Eric, before him and Lauren ever dated, before I even knew who Lauren was, one of the first things I knew about Eric was that Lauren Day would be seen as a street girl. And right now, giving this speech in front of all of you, I can honestly say that we're witnessing a dream come true. Not every night. I have to talk about her personality and stuff, now she's nice and everything. So, <laughs> after five or, six, five or six years of getting to know and seeing together and, you know, hanging out with Lauren, I can honestly say that it's really her awesome personality, great sense of humor, and brains that kept her coming back for more. And I couldn't be happier for you, though. So, <laughs> now I'd like to ask all of you to raise your glasses. Yeah. And a toast to a lifetime of love, happiness, and success to the two luckiest people in the world. Boom. Yeah. 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 Yeah.